How can I make a query in SQL Server that pivots my data? I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're going to take a look at using a pivot query in SQL Server, and we're going to do it in two ways. The first way is going to be a static way where we name our columns that we want, and then we execute our pivot. And the second way is a little bit more in depth, and it shows how to make a pivot query with uh, dynamic columns uh, coming out. And so without further ado, let's get to our pivot in SQL Server. Looking to hire tech contractors for your project? Make sure to check out the links in the description. Okay, so I'm using the AdventureWorks database here, uh, test database that I got from Microsoft. And uh, I'll give you a sort of preview of the little data set that I'm gonna use. Um, so I'm looking at the sales order header table. And uh, so um, that's gonna be in the uh, sales LT there. And uh, if I hit, you know, if I hit F5 and just look at the table, you can see, you know, it's got 32 rows and it's got different dates there for sales. Uh, we're gonna pretend this is the mid month sale and uh, it has an online order flag and it has some totals down at the end here. And uh, the subtotal is the one that we're gonna use since it's not including tax or anything. Uh, Cause our purpose is, or our, you know, our goal is to find out, um, you know, see in a pivot, how did our store sales compared to our online sales for the mid month sale? And so if I look at the order date, order on online order flag and the subtotal, you can get them into a, a sort of a column list uh, here. Um, and, uh, you know, that's great, looks fine. Uh, but we want to pivot that and we want to see it. Uh, where, you know, there's a column for, you know, uh, zero and a column for one for the online order flag. Uh, and also with some sum totals for each of the days. And that's sort of what we want to, that's what we want to see. And so in order to do this, we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a source table. Um, and so uh, what we're going to do is we'll say select star from, and we'll go uh, select uh, inside of that uh, we'll do select from sales LT dot sales order header. And we're going to select those columns that we uh, looked at up above there. Um, so I'll select order date and uh, the online order flag. And I'll go back and put uh, from in there. Uh, and so we've got the order date and online order flag and then the subtotal, which is the amount before our taxes and, uh, and our um, shipping costs. And so what we're going to do is we're going to call that our uh, source um, table. So we'll, we'll call that source and then we can uh, do our pivot. So after that, we'll say pivot um, and we're going to choose the sum uh, of, the, of the subtotal because that's what we want to see. We want to see what's the sub, you know, the amount that we got uh, for online and, and, and offline orders uh, for you know, for each day, for, for each of the mid mid month sales. And so in order to do that, we'll say for online order flag, and then we have to statically, you know, hard code in the expected values there. So if we know what those values are, then the pivot is very easy. If we know that, um, that it's only, uh, you know, one or two or three values that's in our say, you know, that are available for that particular field, Oh, I spelled this wrong here. And um, uh, then we have to know what the values are that we're going to put in there, um, which is fine if you only have a couple of values. Um, uh, but if you have, you know, a big range or varying values that you want to see, then you want to stay tuned in the video because I'm going to show you how to do dynamic uh, video next. So. Basically what you do is you say from my pivot and that's the, the last statement that you do there and uh, and then hit F5 and this is what you're gonna get. So so you've got your, your pivoted values according to your online and offline orders and, uh, and that's great. That's exactly what we wanna see here. Now in the next section, what I wanna do is I'm gonna show how to do a dynamic uh, column, uh, column output, uh, which is 
what, I, what I think a lot of people would like to, to do with the pivot in SQL Server, and so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine a couple of techniques. One is called string underscore ag, which is aggregate, which is going to give us a, a list of those uh, those uh, uh, values or you know categories that you might have in your table. So we're going to declare a variable for that called dynamic columns as nvar car max because it could be a big long list. Um, and then we'll, we'll declare uh, my query as as a, also as an nvar car max. And we're going to actually create the SQL for that at the end of this query here after we load some variable after we load the uh, dynamic column variables. And so I'll use a CTE because I want to get the distinct values from that table of all of the different categories. And in this case, there's only two, but uh, I'll say select distinct online order flag from sales LT uh, dot sales order header. Um, and that's going to give me all of the, um, you know, the values in there um, in distinct ways so that when we, when we put them together in a list, It'll, it won't give duplicates. And so if you do this query that I'm about to do without doing the distinct part of it, um, it'll complain, it'll give an error saying that you know, you've got more than one zero column or more than one in one column or two column or whatever, however many categories you might have. And so then we can load the variable. So we can go select distinct dynamic columns and we'll go uh, string aggregate, which is uh, SQL Server 17 and higher, or uh, Azure. If you're doing SQL Server on Azure, it's the same. Um, and uh, if you're looking to do the same thing using an older version of SQL Server, I have a video that shows you how to do the string aggregate part of this, uh, which I will uh, I'll link uh, uh, up above there. Um, so. Uh, in case you have an older version of SQL Server. So, but in this case, we'll say we want to create that field just like we did in that up above there where you've got the 0, 1 in the static one. We're going to concatenate, uh, you know, the left square bracket, the category, and then the right square bracket using a comma, uh, every possible value, and then we'll say from, the, uh, you know, our, our, uh, our CTE that we created called DST. So now, if I just show you, I can say, you know, select dynamic columns, and if I just run that, um, it's going to show you what the output is. And so, see how um, this dynamic output here? Um, it has the same as our uh, as our static, you know, uh, query, uh, but this could have many, many different columns in it, and so. Uh, this allows us to to go ahead and and continue and create our query using all of these columns here. And so, in order to do that, I'm going to set my query uh, variable equal to, and then we'll select that order date just like we did in our static query. We're going to build a query string this time um, instead of um, hard coding the column values in. So we're going to say select order date, comma, and then we're going to do our dynamic columns, which you see down in the result window there. So it's in this case, it's going to go 0, comma, 1, but you might have, you know, A, B, C or something like that, or you might have different columns, all kinds of different names for your categories. And so we'll say from, and then uh, we're going to do the same thing. So we'll go select, um, you know, order, order date, and then uh, online order flag and uh, subtotal, uh, you know, the subtotal being the amount without the, uh, without the tax and, and stuff. And then we'll go uh, from sales LT, um, sales LT dot sales order header. And uh, that's the same as what we've been using so far. And, uh, and then we'll continue on and we'll order, we'll put in our source and pivot just like we did before. Um, so this that's going to be our source table just like we did before, except now we've got, you know, dynamic columns. There's our source, just like we did in the previous one. Um, and, uh, and we're going to go ahead and now that same query has the columns, all those dynamic columns in it. 
And now we can pivot and we can, you know, based off of those columns, we can do our sums. And so uh, we'll go pivot and then inside of here, uh, we're going to do our sum. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, just create another row here and uh, we'll tab that over to make it look uh, so that it's you can see it pretty clearly. And then there we go, we go sum, uh, subtotal, and then um, we'll say a for online, uh, for online order flag. And, uh, and, then, <clears throat> and then we'll put in our columns. So we'll say in, uh, you know, uh, zero, uh, you know, our dynamic columns, basically zero and one in this case, but it'll be, you know, however many columns that you have. And uh, so we'll add that in for dynamic columns and uh and then that's going to be our you know uh, my query and so it's just going to give the sum make a note that you can also do average and all kinds of other things inside of here you don't you know min and max and those types of things i'm just using some here uh, but you can use different uh, uh summary uh types there so okay so there we go we got from my pivot um and uh, we'll we'll close that out and then all we have to do is uh, is say execute uh, my query and then close it out with a semicolon and then we can select the whole thing and uh, this should go uh, if I haven't screwed up anything here we'll see <laughs> um, my query so there's my query it's going to use dynamic columns and uh, that we created using string ag, ag and then uh, and then um, uh, there's my query that we've created as well. So we're going to select the whole thing and hit F5. And there we go. There's the same result that we got in the first query, except this time the columns were auto-generated. And so you could use the same type of technique uh, for the categories in your, uh, in your query. And I should note that uh, this is, you know, for SQL Server 2017 and higher. Um, and if you'd like to see the example with uh, older versions, I can do that. That's our dynamic query, our static query, and that's how you can do a pivot in SQL Server. Need help or coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to do pivots in SQL Server. If you like what you saw, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Click the bell when you see the bell, and if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.